Madagascar, a mysterious island that has been separated from any other landmass since the Jurassic period. Now in the late Cretaceous, all forms of unique wildlife has evolved in isolation, including one incredibly large toad, Beelzebufo. At 30 centimeters long and 2 kilograms, he may not seem like a dangerous creature, but to anything smaller than him, he is a voracious eating machine, gorging himself on everything from insects to even infant dinosaurs. However, at this time of year, male Beelzebufos take a more nurturing role. Like modern African bullfrogs, these amphibians guard their eggs in small pools that the male has excavated. A female laid her eggs here a few days ago, and the male has remained semi-submerged amongst the eggs, watching over them in case anything comes to eat them. In the dim afternoon light, the male constantly pulls his head under the water in order to keep his skin moist, but other than that, he remains still, blending into the muddy surroundings and ever vigilant. He will not even feed himself until his eggs hatch, when he will clear a path for them out of the mud into the main creek, at which point his maternal instincts will wear off and he will return to hunting. The huge toad can hear the distant calls of dinosaurs coming to drink from the creek, but they are of no concern, as long as they stay away from him and his clutch. And no matter what comes towards him, he will give his life for his eggs, even attacking animals thousands of times his weight. So far, he hasn't had any issues, but that is all about to change. Hopping through the reeds and grasses comes an unusual looking dinosaur. Falcatakili is a crow-sized bird native to Madagascar. Despite looking similar to a modern-day toucan, he is a carnivore, with small sharp teeth similar to his theropod relatives, and he can use them to easily pluck up defenseless toad eggs. The predator pulls himself through the reeds and spies the meal he's looking for, but the male Beelzebufo is also present, and he gives the intruder a clear warning. Puffing himself up and rearing up out of the water, the toad hisses loudly in an evident threat display. The Falcatakili's head darts to the amphibian's direction, but he doesn't seem to think that the angry toad is much of a threat. After listening to it hiss for a few more seconds, the bird dips his head into the water trying to consume as many of the soft eggs as possible. The Beelzebufo is on him in a flash. With one leap, he closes the gap between them and tackles the bird grasping its neck and its mouth. The feathered dinosaur barely manages to open his wings when the toad's jaws clamp down and the thin vertebra of his neck snap like twigs. Just like that, the threat is neutralized. It may seem crazy that a toad could kill such a large animal with one bite, but Beelzebufo's skull is reinforced with solid bone, giving it a tremendous bite force, similar to that of a snapping turtle. However, the male cannot make a meal of this kill. Beelzebufo can only eat something that can fit down their wide mouths, and so the father pushes the dead bird back into the reeds, and then returns to his previous spot to watch and wait. Darkness takes over the land, but many creatures are still active. An infant Majungasaurus is searching for insects along the water's edge, but he picks up the smell of carrion. He makes his way through the ankle-deep water, through the reeds, and comes across some form of bird lying dead yet untouched in the shallows. Without hesitating, the tiny dinosaur starts to bite into the carcass, pulling away the feathers to get at the meat. He is so busy, he doesn't notice the ripples in the water, nor the wide shape slowly moving over the bird's body. Finally, the little carnivore looks up. At first, he sees two horns pointing towards the sky, and then a round and very wide body with two glassy eyes staring at him. The last thing the infant sees is a flat, pink tongue shoot forward from an open moor. A cry is heard from the river's edge, and then a crunch, as a toad eats a dinosaur. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the mightiest toad to have ever lived, Beelzebufo. Beelzebufa and Pinga was first discovered in the Miao Rao Formation in Madagascar. Though its first remains were discovered in 1993, it took 14 years for scientists to gather enough material and data to publish their findings. They found over 70 partial fossil pieces 
and have reconstructed the skeleton into this model, with the blue and light grey parts being the found fossils, and the dark grey being the fill-ins. The name Beelzebufo comes from Beelzebub, meaning the demonic lord of the flies, and Bufo, which is Latin for toad, while the second name, Ampinga, is from the native Malagasy language, which means shield. It is also known as the devil frog, devil toad, or frog from hell. Beelzebufo's size has been one of the main draws, with original measurements putting it around 40 centimeters long. However, more modern calculations put it closer to 25 or 30 centimeters long, so slightly larger than an African bullfrog. However, the skull sutures of even the largest of Beelzebufo remain are still open, meaning that these individuals could have been still growing, so it may have indeed gotten far larger. Appearance-wise, Beelzebufo would have looked similar to modern horn toads, which are its closest living descendants. Just like them, it had an incredibly wide mouth, indicating that it wasn't just feeding on insects, but much larger prey. This has of course led to the theory that Beelzebufo could consume infant dinosaurs, and has been seen doing so in almost every interpretation you'll see of it. The fact is, like modern frogs and toads, Beelzebufo would have eaten anything that could fit into its mouth and down its throat, and with such a wide gape, that no doubt included dinosaur hatchlings. Though it likely didn't have the long tongue often associated with frogs, its upper jaws were lined with over 150 sharp teeth, used to hold anything it caught in its mouth. If that seems like overkill, scientists studying Beelzebufo's skull have uncovered some interesting features. The bones of the mouth, skull, and perhaps the spine were lined with bony scales or scutes, which may have been a form of protection. Along with this, it also gave Beelzebufo an incredible bite force. Modern horned toads have strong bites themselves, and were used to scale Beelzebufo's bite. The calculations show that a large Beelzebufo had a bite force of 2,200 newtons. That's twice the power of an average human bite, meaning that whatever the toad decided to eat likely wasn't going to be able to fight back once it bit down on it. Beelzebufo had a body type similar to its modern descendants, meaning that it didn't hop very much to get around, and likely walked when it had to move. It also lacks an eardrum. This is seen in frogs that burrow, and may be a clue of how it lived. The environment it lived in was seasonal, with short wet seasons and long dry seasons. During the dry season, Beelzebufo likely dug into the mud and dirt and remained dormant for much of the year, waiting for the rains to come. When the wet season arrived, they would come out of the ground to feed and breed while the conditions were favorable. For scientists, one of the most confusing parts about Beelzebufo has nothing to do with the animal itself, but its location. As mentioned earlier, it is most closely related to the horned toads, also known as Pac-Man frogs. However, all of these frogs live in South America, so how did Beelzebufo end up in Madagascar? You see, Madagascar was originally a part of India, which broke off from Antarctica, so the last time there would have been any big land bridges between these land masses and South America would have been during the Triassic, or very early Jurassic. And yet Beelzebufo was still around 70 million years ago at the end of the Cretaceous. There are plenty of theories, such as this simply being a case of convergent evolution, where two entirely different families evolved similar traits due to similar environmental pressures. Another is that the ancestor of these species must have been widespread across the supercontinent before it split apart, and then the different frog species evolved separately. There is little evidence to support this, however, as the earliest known Pac-Man frog ancestor didn't appear until well after the supercontinent broke up, but of course this could be due to lack of fossil evidence. So unfortunately we may never know, but convergent evolution seems to be the most likely answer at this point. We don't often think of frogs as dangerous hunters, since they are so low on the food chain. However, they are absolutely ruthless to whatever they hunt. And there are quite a few cases of large predatory frogs, like the Pac-Man frogs, that punch above their weight. And if you want an example of how bad they can be, just look at what cane toads have done to the Australian ecosystem. So, Beelzebufo, potentially the largest frog of all time, that shot the fame as a consumer of baby dinosaurs. But what do you think of Beelzebufo? And for my question of the week, can you think of any other ways that a horned toad ancestor could have gotten to Madagascar? What lesser known extinct creature would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching. 
Can't believe they call them Pac-Man frogs. It's friggin' awesome. 